Yeah, but well, I'm, I'm very lucky that this ensemble came to the table, basically. And I think uh, that, that I think once we'd cast Michelle and once we'd cast Ken, they're both actors who are tremendous magnets to other actors. So I think the combination of wanting to work with them, actors liking the characters on the page, and the fact that we were shooting in London, where a lot of great actors live, um, uh, enabled us to assemble a great cast. Yeah, I think seeing Michelle's performance as Marilyn evolve was the greatest experience of my career. Well, I mean, she's very, very smart, so she brings this phenomenal intelligence to all her parts. Um, and the film sort of tackles the difference between, as it was then perceived in 1956, old-fashioned English theatrical acting, you know, uh, false noses and uh, limps and so on, and uh, the new method uh, that Marilyn was attached to, which is about internal psychological characterization. But what's amazing about Michelle is that she does both. She came to the part in all kinds of ways by uh, understanding the psychology of Marilyn in 1956 and also uh, by, by, by learning the body language. And uh, the little dance that Marilyn does from The Prince and the Showgirl that Michelle performs in the movie was something she worked so hard on it in rehearsals before we started shooting. And, and she sort of discovered Marilyn's body language by doing that. Yeah, I mean, our film is, tells the story of the making of a quite famous movie, The Prince and the Showgirl, which was much uh, vaunted because it brought together Laurence Olivier, age 50, and Marilyn Monroe, age 30, at the height of her career. Unfortunately, it wasn't a very successful movie, and we tell the story of how it sort of went wrong. But we do recapture, or recreate, I should say, uh, a number of scenes from that film, and in some ways, they wouldn't say they were the easiest things we did, but because we actually had the material to watch, we knew what we were doing. There was a, a road map, if you like, do you know what I mean? Um, and uh, both Michelle and Ken, particularly, are, are, are such conscientious uh, actors. Uh, they made it very easy for me, you know, because they, they knew what they were doing. Yeah, I mean, I felt very blessed because it was quite tricky to cast because Sybil Thorndike, um, uh, Vivian Lee and Arthur Miller are hugely significant, iconic parts, but quite small parts in the story of our film. So I felt very lucky I was able to get actors of the stature of uh, Dame Judy and Julia and Dougray Scott to take on those parts. And because I felt, you know, we would do a disservice to those characters if we didn't cast them as well as we'd cast everything else in the movie. And it just so happened with the schedule and so on that they, they were able to do that. And, you know, Emma Watson plays, you know, a small part in the film, but I, I'm really grateful that she was able to break off from her studies at, at university to, 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 to join us. We all sort of just immersed ourselves in it. I mean, obviously, in terms of research, we had The Prince and the Showgirl in existence, and most importantly of all, we had Colin Clark's diary, because in many ways, our job was not to tell the whole story, but to tell Colin Clark's version of this story. But you couldn't help but read all the, the other uh, source material. I mean, there are so many books written, obviously, about Marilyn and Olivier and Arthur Miller and, and so on. You know, there's so much material. So one built up a sort of picture of this time from all this information. And a lot of it contradicted each other and different people had different versions. So one sort of began to get an essential truth by, by balancing all these things together. And it turned out it was such an important time in all these characters' lives. You know, in 1956, you know, Marilyn had such high hopes that she was going to be able to change her life and become this serious actress she so craved to be. And she came to England newly married to the great Arthur Miller. She was now uh, her own producer, had set up way ahead of her time a production company, had come to London to work with the great Olivier. So she had such high hopes for this period. And really the sad story of our film is how all those things went wrong.